Hey everybody, I'm Dan McClellan. I'm a scholar of the Bible and religion, and the fit for today is this black and white X-Men number 11 cover. Let's take a look at a video. Two and a half years ago, my husband had a conversation with a co-worker, and it's changed how we eat. All right, let's see it. So he came home, and he said his Christian friend doesn't eat pork. I'm like, why? Why, why doesn't he eat pork? It was declared clean. It's in Matthew, Mark. It's, it's in a gospel. I'm like, why? So the two main passages are in the book of Acts. The first is Acts 10. This is where Peter is on his roof and he's hungry and he has a vision where he sees all sorts of clean and unclean animals and he hears a voice say, rise, kill, and eat. And he says, no, Lord, for I have never eaten anything profane or unclean. And then the voice says, what God has declared clean, you don't get to declare unclean. And then that vision is repeated three times. And that's considered the main uh, turning point away from the ritual cleanliness standards of earlier Jewish practices. But there's also the results of the Jerusalem Council in Acts 15, where they decide, hey, we're going to send a letter out to everyone and just say, if you convert to Christianity, uh, you just have to abstain from things polluted by idols, from fornication, from things strangled, and from blood. Although Paul presents a fairly different standard and most Christians historically have sided with Paul over and against the results of the Jerusalem Council. So we went and he asked his friend. His friend came back and said, that verse that you're referring to was added in the recent history. I can't remember if it's 100 or 200 years ago. So I did, I, I started doing some digging. He's correct, that verse in, in the Bible was added by man in the recent history. I'm not sure exactly. But that's accurate. So this sounds like a reference to Mark 7, 19. And this is part of a story where some people have challenged Jesus and his disciples saying, you eat with unwashed hands because a tradition had developed that you washed your hands every single time you ate so that you did not defile your food. But this is not in the Torah and Jesus does not follow this. And so Jesus explains that what goes into your mouth uh, does not defile you. It's what's in your heart that defiles you. And then we have this parenthetical statement at the end of verse 19. It's not from Jesus. It seems to be added by the narrator. And the Greek is katharizon uh, pantata vromata, which literally means cleaning all food. And this is widely agreed by scholars to be original to the Gospel of Mark. And a good discussion of what's going on here is found in Matt Thiessen's book. Jesus and the forces of death. But this comment has a particular rhetorical scope. And the scope is this question of whether or not unwashed hands defile the food that you eat. And by saying cleaning all foods, the narrator is not saying there is no more distinction between clean and unclean foods broadly. It's saying within the scope of this discussion about whether or not hands defile food, Jesus is declaring no, all foods that we eat are not defiled by unwashed hands. They are rendered clean. And this is not an addition from the last couple of centuries, but there are some ancient manuscripts that do alter it a little bit and add a word or two that basically change it from just cleaning all foods to, and by saying this, Jesus cleaned all foods. Uh, and so it's a little change that doesn't really make a difference to how we interpret this. But the notion that this parenthetical uh, statement from the narrator is a recent addition is not supported by any data. So then I started doing some more digging. I'm like, well, maybe, maybe I'm just missing something. Maybe it's somewhere else. It was all food is declared clean. Um, and it wasn't. I kept reading. I kept digging. I didn't go to my pastor. I just, I went to the word and I wanted to know what the scriptures say. And so it turned out all food was not declared clean. Again, it's Acts 10 and Acts 15 and also Paul that have historically been understood by the overwhelming majority of Christians to indicate that there is no more distinction between clean and unclean food. In fact, food is defined in Leviticus and pork is not food. So Leviticus 11 is where we have uh, outlined what animals are clean and what animals are ritually unclean, but it doesn't say they're not food. It just says they are unclean to you. So then, at this point, I was like, what else am I wrong about? 
Everybody who wants the Bible to inform and give meaning and significance to their experiences and to their identities has to negotiate with it in one form or another. And as long as we're not deploying it to structure power and values and boundaries over and against vulnerable and marginalized and oppressed groups or hurting people with our negotiations, I would say it's not so much a question of right or wrong, but of preference.